We're sitting here with Cal Dunn, Wolverine, from the 90s X-Men animated series. It's a pleasure to sit with you because I, when I was a kid, Wolverine, uh, with, along with a lot of kids, uh, Wolverine was my favorite character because of just all the stuff that he went through without this, with throughout the series. That's, uh, that's a good choice, Bob. <laughs> how did you feel getting the... Did you know how iconic the character was when you first jumped no, into it? Not in the least. I mean, none of us, including... Have you talked to Gambit yet? Or, you not know, yet. Chris? Any of us. Beast, George Booza, none of us, when we were approached, knew anything about the X-Men. Who they were, that we all, us all said, almost in unison, who the hell are the X-Men? Seriously. Yeah. And so when I... And they said, Mike, they wanted me to audition for Wolverine. I said, and he might be. Who's that? They had to show us pictures, you know, any pictures, whatever, of yeah. the <laughs> iconic character Wolverine. And uh, we knew nothing about it. And we went in, and I, I auditioned, and um, luckily, got it. Very uh, cool. Aud audition because they had no idea. There was no voice. Be before mine, there was no Wolverine. Yeah. And it is. And really now, you know, it's now either your voice or maybe Hugh Jackman's voice that people think of when yeah. they think of Wolverine. Oh, for sure, yeah, I, does I would it, think. Does it feel good to be on level with Hugh Jackman? Yeah, there's there, there's a thing between Hugh and I, and he doesn't, and I don't even know if he's aware of it, probably not. But when we first met back in 90, sorry, uh, 2000, he was in Toronto, <laughs> excuse me, shooting, getting ready to shoot the movie. So we were introduced because he was given the only reference for Wolverine's voice with you fans and kids and every and that in those times, even now, was my voice on the animated series. So he was told, study this voice. So we, so we were introduced at this party, this function, and he said, well, the Wolverines, we'd like the two Wolverines to meet each other. And I said, who's the impersonator? And it's him. He said, he said, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mike. Um, but but I'm, I gotta be true. He said, a pleasure to meet you, mate, but I'm, I'm sick and tired of listening to your voice. <laughs> Swear to God. That's incredible. He said that. I said, yeah. So I, uh, great to meet you, mate, but I, I, I'm getting sick and tired of listening to your voice. <laughs> he said, all the best, and I said, you too, and good luck with it, bub. You know. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. But, and, but and then he, you know, his last movie was, uh, I had a TV show in the, in the uh, 80s, 70, 78 to 83 two or three, called Circus. It was syndicated worldwide. And I was, it was like a Donnie and Marie show. Myself and a girl were the hosts, two stars, and we had six dancers. Uh, <coughs> all the major circus acts in the world were on our show. And, and, you know, it was on for five years. So I was the ringmaster, you know, sort of, two of us were the, the stars. Well, what does you do? It's like he's following me around. <laughs> he does. And what was his last movie? The Barnum thing. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The Circus. The, the Greatest Showman. <laughs> the Greatest Showman. Yeah. And most of my life, before I did any voiceovers, in 92 was probably the first thing I ever did as a voiceover. I was singing. I sang for 20 years prior, you know, commercials. The, the singer in Canada doing voiceovers for commercials, not voiceovers, for, um, singing. Yeah. You know, that was what I did. And I was a singer, and I toured with Joe Cocker with our band that we were toured with Joe Cocker back then, within the day. And I was I, singing was my main main thing. What's you doing now? Yeah, he's just following. He's touring. He's riding those coattails hard. Hugh Jackman's he's, riding. He's touring again on my tail coat. He's doing a tour as his song and dance thing, like you know, and it's you know a great show I'm sure, but it's a one man show that he's doing. Singing now, are you Hugh? Yeah. So what next? So it's just amazing the yeah. the, the likenesses and stuff. So. Yeah, for sure. He's definitely following in your footsteps. Hopefully, he's doing you justice. Hopefully, <laughs> well, he's I wish doing him you all the luck. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, he needs that. <laughs> Obviously, the show has been such a uh, landmark for people like us and for just fans in general that are in love with the X Men. What do you think it is that really keeps people engaged with that uh, that animated series? I think the main thing is the topics that they um, that we addressed in the show, and, and it's definitely I would never refer to this this um, animated series as a cartoon, yeah. which we all did when we got the the gig. It was like, oh, I got I'm doing a cartoon. I can't believe it. And when we saw the show, when I saw it for the first time, I went, oh dear, this is not a cartoon. And they dealt with everything, racism, religion, and the fact that all of us were different. And all had, we're mutants for God's sake, so we're outcasts. And kids growing up in that day, 
identify with one or three or whatever of the characters and, and uh, love the characters for whatever reason because they were different. And it made them feel like they can, they can get through. So many times fans have said, I couldn't have got through my childhood without, without the X-Men and, and gotten as far as I, it's like unbelievable with the fans, the way they feel about it. So <laughs> I think it was, a, it was a very, it was wonderful for them to watch it and to identify with, with us, with the characters. And it's heartwarming to hear the fans say whatever, when they come up, yeah. what they have to say, because it's wonderful. And you played such a huge part of the show. You were one of the mainstays, and obviously a lot of people love Wolverine. Was there a storyline that you were particularly fond of within the, the yeah. length of the series? Yeah, um, I loved the uh, Nightcrawler episode because that addressed, r number one, religion. Um, uh, the Nightcrawler was, again, well, they're all outcasts, but uh, it was like I'd never seen Wolverine get that emotional and everyone saw a softer side of him at the end of that when he's like, uh, you know, when I crawler says to him, uh, Logan, see things through different eyes. He said, where's your God now? Where's your God now? Because they burnt down the, you know, the mission and all the place said, that is only bricks and mortar, Logan. You know, that they can be rebuilt. He said, think, see with different eyes. And he gave him, I've given you some excerpts here from the book that he, the Bible he gave him or whatever he gave him. And the, the end of that particular episode is Wolverine in the church, on his knees from shot from the back, and then the front of him kneeling down and re reading the prayer that uh, Nightcrawler pointed out to him. And at the back of the church is, is uh, um, Rogue, and there's a tear coming down her eye. And it was just oh, like, yeah. stop it. <laughs> no, I'm mean, like, this is, you know, it was, that's how wonderful the series, and everyone, everyone can identify with, with that. Yeah. And there was tender moments, and for sure, there were violent moments. Never, you never ever saw on the show saw anyone die nope. or be killed. Yeah. That was against the rules. The writer said that we, that will never happen. They all run away, or you know, <laughs> and they may be burning a bit, but they're running away. But so that, that kids, I you know, well, I still love it. I've got the new ones on DVD, new ones, the old series yeah. on DVD, all five years, and I'm just loving every second of it. Yeah, and it I'm stands up today. It's like it's so excellent. Absolutely, and I, we we come back, go back and rewatch them. We have the DVDs as well, and now it's going to come out hopefully on Disney Plus, and everybody yeah. will get to share that with everyone uh, yeah. there. And just as a last question, just because I've been yeah. asking some of the other guys, obviously now with social media being so prevalent, you kind of get more of the feedback probably if you if you're on social media or just hearing it from other people, honestly too. Um, how was it for you guys back in the day when you guys were recording it? How did you feel about did it take you guys a while to realize how much of an impact the show was making with, yeah. with fans? Or, yeah, know. and a lot of us, and not well, especially George Buza, who played Beast, he had never been to a Comic-Con. And he, had, he, as a matter of fact, had never, had never watched an episode of the X-Men. Oh, yeah, yeah. Before I told him, you have to, you have to come with me to these Comic-Cons. He didn't believe it. <laughs> so he had to go and like, try and find some episodes to watch to re refresh his mind. Yeah. No, we had no idea that it would yeah. be as huge as it was. Well, like I said, but after the first the first episode that I saw, I said, "Oh dear, this is huge. This is this is a great thing." Yeah. And then every episode I watched was like, I, "I just can't get enough of this." Yeah. Love this guy. I love all the characters, uh, and getting to pick on Cyclops was just so much fun. <laughs> yeah, pretty boy, pretty boy, teacher's pet, definitely yeah, Cyclops. Cyclops. <laughs> I ran the show, not you, bub. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. true. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate Very it. Well. Obviously, X Men. I'll show you my tattoo. I'm a huge fan. I've been, you know. Logan. I, I, I'll show you the back. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. So we've been uh, we've been fans for years, and you know, I so much thank you for for embodying these characters and bringing those to oh, us at home and everything. Yeah. Welcome. I love all you people, and keep on keeping on. <laughs>